My name is Karen, and at 32 years old, I find myself reflecting on the transformative events of the past few months. Six months ago, I faced a heart-wrenching loss with the passing of my grandfather, who had been my steadfast guardian and mentor throughout my life. Today is a significant day, as the lawyer is scheduled to reveal the details of my grandfather's will, a moment that feels both heavy and hopeful. Seeking comfort during this emotional time, I am grateful for the presence of my sister, Helen, who is three years older than me. We share a bond forged in adversity, having lost our parents in a devastating accident 22 years ago. Since that tragic day, our grandparents took us under their wings, showering us with love and guidance. However, our family felt the sting of loss again when our grandmother died from an illness, leaving us in the caring but increasingly fragile hands of our grandfather. His health declined over the years, and out of deep concern, I moved into an apartment close to his home to ensure I could visit him regularly. Despite my frequent visits, he would often chide me playfully, claiming it was unbecoming for a grown woman to keep returning to her childhood home. Nonetheless, he always greeted me with a smile, his warmth undiminished by the trials of age. Then, during a routine visit, a dire turn of events unfolded as I found my grandfather in severe pain at his doorstep. Frantically, I called for an ambulance, but despite the swift response, he passed away suddenly. Today, as the hour of the will reading approaches, Helen's voice cuts through my contemplation, reminding me to brew some tea for the occasion. As I make my way to the kitchen, I catch a glimpse of her relaxing on the mat, the familiar scent of her strong perfume filling the air, a reminder of her unchanging nature and the continuity of our shared past. I remember my sister Helen's teenage years vividly. She was the epitome of rebellion, experimenting with vibrant hair colors and mingling with a crowd that our grandparents deemed troublesome. Despite the headaches she caused, necessitating frequent apologies from our grandparents, Helen seemed untouched by the disapproval, living her life with a carefree zest. Even as an adult, she maintained that free-spirited approach, working only part-time and often relying on our grandfather for financial support. Today, as the lawyer arrived to read our grandfather's will, I prepared tea to serve. Helen offered a formal greeting that filled the room, acknowledging the gravity of the moment. The lawyer, with his gentle demeanor reminding me of grandfather, accepted the tea and began to disclose the contents of the will. The document revealed that Helen was to inherit a staggering $30 million, while I was bequeathed our family home and the land it stood on. Upon learning about her fortune, Helen burst into laughter, a reaction that left me standing in silent astonishment at the unexpected disparity in our inheritances. While Helen received a literal fortune in cold hard cash, I was left with what appeared to be nothing more than an ancient rundown house. The irony of the situation wasn't lost on me, and I couldn't help but chuckle quietly at the stark contrast in our fortunes. How fitting for someone as plain as you, Helen teased, her laughter still resonating through the room. I tried to defend the value of my inheritance by pointing out the considerable size of the land that came with the house. It's not just the house, there's also the land, I countered. Helen snorted dismissively at my comment. The potential value of the land in such a remote, seemingly forgotten place clearly didn't escape her, yet her preference was clear. Ah, I would have preferred the cash, she remarked with a smirk, clearly pleased with her lot. The complexity of our inheritances mirrored the differences in our personalities and choices, adding a layer of bittersweet humor to the whole ordeal. Reflecting on the distribution of my grandfather's will, I couldn't help but feel a tinge of disappointment mixed with surprise. I guess Grandpa really had a soft spot for me, I said, trying to mask the uncertainty in my voice. I reasoned with myself that perhaps he intended for me to preserve the cherished family home and land, a place rich with memories of him and my grandmother. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? remarked my boyfriend, Alex, 
catching me off guard with his reaction as I relayed the details of my inheritance. However, his enthusiasm didn't quite resonate with me. I shook my head, implying that the reality wasn't as rosy as it seemed. As I shared the story, a sense of hollowness washed over me, voicing the situation felt almost like confirming a sort of perceived lesser value. Trying to lighten the atmosphere, Alex made a rather thoughtless comment about the benefits of beauty and wealth. I gave him a sidelong glance, a silent reprimand for his tactlessness. Realizing his faux pas, he quickly shifted gears, joking about valuing my comfort more than material gains. Alex and I had been together since meeting at a social event, and today marked our first casual outing as a couple. Discussing the inheritance made me ponder the future, even imagining him as a potential husband. Little did I know, this revelation would soon lead to an unexpected twist of regret. A few days later, as I entered the old family house to start the overwhelming job of sorting through my grandfather's possessions, I considered the idea of moving in. Its close proximity to my workplace made it an attractive option. Maybe I could really make a life here, even with a cat, I mused. The lack of rent was alluring, and I figured any maintenance costs could be managed with my savings. The thought of sharing this space with Alex even made me blush, embarrassed by my forward thinking. Rolling up my sleeves to begin cleaning, my contemplation was abruptly interrupted by the ringing of my smartphone. Glancing at the display, I saw my sister's name flash across the screen, hinting at more unexpected developments in what was shaping up to be a series of surprising events. Hello, Karen. How are you faring in that quaint old house of yours? She inquired, her tone laced with curiosity and a hint of irony. I hoped you were finding some peace in being alone, I quipped, but it seemed my sister was indulging in a different kind of solace, one marked by rounds of drinks. Her speech always had a tendency to be languid and drawn out, but today, it was noticeably more slurred. As she spoke about the time, her words meandered with an alcohol-tinged flair, highlighting her afternoon choice of beverage which I couldn't help but sigh at. A sigh she echoed dramatically, playfully branding me as the perpetual Miss Goody Two-Shoes. It became obvious that her merriment stemmed from more than just liquor when she asked about my plans for the future. I hesitantly shared my thoughts about possibly moving into our family home, hoping to change the subject. Instead, she took this as an opportunity to flaunt her current luxurious surroundings in a posh hotel suite her voice dripping with an exaggerated zest. She then teasingly challenged me to guess who might be accompanying her, treating my ignorance with disdain. She provocatively suggested that my reserved attitude might compromise my relationship with someone named Alex. To my shock, Alex himself joined the conversation, leaving me reeling and filled with confusion. As Alex's familiar voice came through, a flood of troubling thoughts overwhelmed me. The sudden revelation of my sister's connection with him sketched a troubling image in my mind, one that had me feeling dizzy and unsettled. She went on to boast about capturing Alex's attention, narrating how she had learned of his workplace from me, approached him after work, and charmed him. Her words poured out boastfully, leaving me stunned and silent. Her subsequent apologies did little to soothe the emotional turmoil I felt. When Alex spoke again to explain his side, a chill swept over me, draining my spirit as he admitted his attraction to my sister seemed more appealing and opportune, deepening my sense of betrayal. Trying to express my feelings amidst this chaos was nearly impossible as I grappled with the shock and hurt of the moment. I found myself utterly speechless as Alex tried to rationalize his behavior, almost pleading with me to grasp the seductive appeal of a woman possessing significant wealth. I felt a deep recoil at his words, the sting of rejection and humiliation sharp and sudden. In the background, my sister's laughter, unreasonably loud and triumphant, punctuated the chaos she had wrought. As the phone was handed back to her, she delivered a statement with such finality, it felt like a physical blow, announcing the end of our sisterly bond. 
Her words hung heavy in the air, the concept of sisterhood now just shattered fragments of a once-treasured relationship. Over the next six years, solitude and heartache became my close companions. Now, as I sat with a cat peacefully dozing on my lap, the memories of that devastating phone call remained vividly etched in my mind. The room was filled with the soft hum of the cat purring in its sleep, a comforting sound on my day off. Yet, there was a lingering sense of guilt about some unfinished work I had brought home. As I mulled over my to-do list, the tranquility was broken by the ring of my phone, an unfamiliar number flashing on the screen. Assuming it might be work-related, I answered without suspicion. Hello, I greeted only to hear a voice that was unmistakably familiar. Karen, long time no see, said my sister, Helen, her unique speech patterns instantly recognizable despite the years. A smirk formed on my face as I acknowledged her, and as our conversation unfolded, Helen began prying into my personal life, inquiring about a new hotel near my home. I chose to keep the details to myself, deflecting her questions. The conversation took a surprising turn when Helen confessed her financial woes, revealing that she had blown through her entire inheritance in just four years. Even Alex, who had remained by her side, was now mired in debt. As I listened to Helen's request for a loan, my initial annoyance faded into a profound sense of detachment. I responded with calm, bringing up the consequences of her actions in the past, which prompted a flood of memories from six years ago, the day Alex ended our relationship. Devastated, I found comfort in an old painting I had given to my grandfather as a child. During a moment of introspection, I discovered a hidden note behind the painting, a letter addressed to me from my grandfather written shortly before his death. In the letter, my grandfather explained the reasons behind the seemingly uneven distribution of his estate, emphasizing his deep appreciation for my constant care and presence in his final years. This revelation brought clarity to any lingering questions about favoritism and provided much-needed closure. It reassured me about my grandfather's intentions, confirming that the distribution was a testament to the enduring bonds within our family and highlighting the true significance behind his decisions. As I digested the contents of the letter, a shiver ran down my spine at the realization that I could have easily missed this crucial message. Despite the clarity it brought, I still found myself deeply hurt by Helen's cruel words from that time. Although I had a strong connection with my grandfather, a tinge of jealousy lingered as I continued to read. Helen, it seemed, was not satisfied with a simple share of the inheritance. Her greed was pervasive, extending even to her role as a granddaughter. The letter starkly illuminated her actions, how she had not only squandered her inheritance, but also manipulated situations to her benefit, including taking Alex away from me. This acknowledgement from my grandfather, though painful, was a necessary insight into the dynamics that had long influenced our family's interactions. Feeling a duty to my grandfather's intentions, I had arranged to meet with Alex to discuss the inheritance. My grandfather's will had been crafted thoughtfully, seemingly granting Helen the larger share at first glance. However, a hidden detail in his letter revealed more. The land I received was expected to grow significantly in value due to urban development nearby. As I read through the letter, my eyes widened with surprise. Grandpa had suggested I could either live on the land if I felt emotionally attached to it or sell it for a substantial profit when its value increased. His main wish was for my happiness. When I shared this revelation with Helen, she scoffed disdainfully and dismissively called me an old hag. Despite her reaction, I decided to heed our grandfather's advice. I lived in the house for a while, and once I was married and the land's value had risen sufficiently, I sold it. When Helen later approached me for a loan, I firmly told her I wouldn't lend her any money. In her frustration, she audaciously offered to return Alex to me as a bargaining chip. That was the last straw. I unleashed years of pent-up frustration, 
telling Helen how much her ingratitude repulsed me. I disowned her as my sister, making it clear I was already happily married and had no desire to see Alex again. I ended the conversation, blocked her calls, and apologized to my cat for the emotional upheaval. Unwilling to let go, Helen and Alex mistakenly stormed into what they thought was still my house, causing havoc. The police were called as they destroyed several items. It was then revealed during their questioning that they had previously committed marriage fraud to extract money. Both were arrested and faced charges that could lead to prison time. This final incident underscored the toxic dynamics that had escalated over the years, affirming my decision to cut ties and move on from the destructive relationship with my sister. Having successfully proven my lack of involvement after selling the land and severing ties with Helen, my husband came to pick me up from the police station. As we navigated the bustling corridors, we saw Helen and Alex, both looking distraught and barely recognizable, being escorted to another part of the facility. A wave of melancholy washed over me, seeing how far things had deteriorated, but the warmth of my husband's presence offered a comforting contrast. As we stepped outside into the crisp air, my husband's concerned gaze met mine. Are you okay? he asked, his voice laden with worry. I responded with a reassuring smile and placed his hand on my belly, feeling the gentle kick of our unborn child. I have you and our baby right here, I said the words not just a reassurance to him, but a reminder to myself of the new priorities in my life. The ride home was quiet but filled with an unspoken understanding and comfort. We didn't need to discuss what had just transpired. We were both just relieved to be moving past the chaos. As we drove, I looked out the window, watching the scenery blur past, and reflected on the tumultuous events that had unfolded over the years. It dawned on me how life had thrown such unexpected challenges my way, and yet, here I was, with a partner who stood by me and a new life blossoming inside me. The stark contrast between my current state of peace and the turmoil of the past highlighted a profound truth about the human experience. Adversity is not just about the hardships themselves, but what we choose to carry forward from them. The ordeal with Helen and Alex was painful and fraught with betrayal, yet it also served as a pivotal point for me to reassess what truly mattered. It wasn't the monetary value of the inheritance that held weight, it was the lessons of love, resilience, and forgiveness that I would take away from the experience. As we arrived home, I felt a deep sense of gratitude for the stability and love that awaited me. Stepping through the door, my husband and I were greeted by the quiet comfort of our living space, a stark contrast to the stark and sterile environment of the police station. It was in this sanctuary that we would prepare for the arrival of our child in a home filled with love and devoid of the shadows of the past. Over the next few months, as my belly grew and the baby's kicks became stronger, I often found myself thinking about the kind of world I wanted our child to inherit. It was a world where love and integrity stood at the forefront, where family was about support and understanding, not conflict and greed. I realized that teaching our child about these values started with how I lived my own life. The decision to let go of bitterness and focus on building a nurturing environment was not just for my own peace, but was a foundational step in crafting the legacy I would leave for the next generation. As I moved forward, every step felt lighter, each day brighter, with my husband by my side and the future ahead. I looked forward to the days when we could teach our child about the true essence of wealth. It wasn't measured in dollars and property, but in the moments of laughter shared, the hugs exchanged, and the unconditional love that bound us together.